Hi YouTube, what's up? Welcome to the build of a custom water cool PC. For many years, computers have been thought of boring pieces of metal with a lot of components and wires inside. With the modern computers, things have changed. The computer has now been reimagined and is a style statement. The modern PCs come with an all glass side panel similar to the Thermaltake Level 20 HD over here. You have RGB lighting, you have water cool builds and what not. So today we are going to be doing a full custom water cool build and I'm really excited as this is my first water cool build. The computer over here is primarily built for video editing and multitasking and also a bit of casual gaming of course. Unfortunately my laptop did not meet my requirements so I thought hey why not build a PC that not only meets my requirement but also pleases my eye. To achieve this I have gone ahead with the latest Corsair Vengeance RGB program the Asus ROG X570E motherboard to take advantage of the latest PCIe Gen 4, AMD Ryzen 3900X CPU and of course the Corsair Hydro X water cooling kit. For GPU I have chosen the AMD Sapphire 5600 XT graphics card. Unfortunately I couldn't find a compatible water cooling block for this GPU. I will be covering all the components in detail as I build the PC. I have also put the details of the components used in the description below. So what are you waiting for? Let's begin! To pair with the ASUS ROG X570E motherboard, I have chosen the AMD Ryzen 3900X processor, which is one of the best processors in the market currently with 12 cores and 24 threads. The AMD processors have pins on the underside, so you'll have to be careful while aligning it onto the motherboard CPU socket. There is an arrow guide on the CPU to assist with the alignment. Once securely placed, carefully close the CPU latch to lock the CPU in place. For memory, it was a no-brainer as I wanted a RAM that's not only fast but also looks cool and has RGB lighting. Hence, I chose the 32GB Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB memory, which is DDR4 at 3200 MHz frequency. To install the RAM, open the latch and carefully place the module in its slot. Press till you hear a clicking sound. Do not apply too much pressure as you might end up damaging the board. I chose the black kit and the white kit memory from Corsair for a beautiful contrasted look. I have chosen the Western Digital SN750 NVMe SSD drive with 1TB space as my primary storage. These are ridiculously fast with 3.5 GB per second read speeds. They come pre-installed with a heatsink to cool down the SSDs. To install the NVMe drive, we'll need to take off the shield from the ASUS motherboard along with the heatsinks. You can do this by using a Phillips screwdriver. Now, place the SSD drive into the NVMe slot and secure it with the provided screw. Once finished, reinstall the motherboard shield and secure it with the screws. To cool the CPU, I have used the Corsair Hydro XC7 CPU block. These are built like a tank and have RGB lighting. They come pre-installed with thermal paste which is nice as we don't have to worry about applying thermal paste later. Let's take off the CPU cooler bracket from the motherboard as these are no longer required for the XC7 CPU block. The XC7 is compatible with both Intel and AMD CPUs. By default, they come with the Intel bracket, so we need to remove them and attach the AMD bracket.
Now place the back plate under the motherboard and secure it with the thumb screws. Once done, place the CPU block and tighten it with the thumb screws. Make sure that you do not over tighten them. The best thing about the Thermaltake Level 20 case is that it's completely modular and all the parts can be taken apart. Here we are taking off the motherboard plate to attach the motherboard. This is very handy as you don't have to struggle hard to attach the motherboard onto the case. Once done, simply place the motherboard plate back onto the case and tighten them with the provided thumb screws. Now let's take off the wire routing backplate and place the radiator plate vertically. I chose this as I wanted to vertically mount the radiator and the RGB fans. Once the radiator and the fans are attached to the radiator plate, place them back in the slot and tighten them with the thumb screws. The power supply unit is mounted on the top of the case. I have chosen the platinum rated EVGA Supernova 1200 power supply unit. These are really efficient, very quiet and are modular for better wire management. As you can see, my wire management skills are not great. But why bother when the wires are hidden in the rear compartment of the Thermaltake case? Here, I am connecting all the Corsair RGB fans to the provided Node Pro Hub. So guys, this was part 1 of the Extreme Water Cool build. Hope you guys liked it and enjoyed it. Stay tuned as in the next video, I will be showing you how to install the remaining components along with the water cooling kit to turn this computer into a masterpiece. I'll also show you the techniques to bend hardline tubes. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. That's all for this video. Take care. Goodbye. Namaste.